one championship middleweight and light heavyweight champion, Ung Lao and Song, is here at the Hard Knocks 365 Training Center in Fort Lauderdale. Train all the way to Fort Lauderdale. So let me just first start with that. What brought you to Fort Lauderdale? Um, you know, um, ever since the first time I trained here with you know our, our, our head coach and our trainer Henry Hu, I, I really liked it. I've uh, clicked really well with the training partners here as well. And you know, ever ever since my first training session, I was like, I need to be here. So I made my switch. Uh, originally, my camp was in uh, Baltimore, Maryland, and then I moved here um, because it's all pros. Uh, before I, I would be training with the amateurs, you know. Now it's all pros, and this is probably to me, for me, it's the best training camp, the best camp uh, in in the world. How did you find it, and how did you meet Henry? I was actually, I came down here for American Top Team. Uh, I tried it out there. It, it, American Top Team is a great you know, facility, a great gym, a great team as well. But with, with the way I compete, with the way you know, I, I fight, um, I have a better connection with the coaches and the trainers here. And that's why I made a move uh, to come down to Arnold 365. How do you like Fort Lauderdale? I love it, you know, it's a paradise. It's like a, it's like a vacation, you know, a, a vacation every day, you know. Um, it's summer all year round, uh, the beach is closed, it's, it's beautiful. Uh, matter of fact, you know, I just bought a house uh, in Lake Worth, a little far from here, um, and, and we love it, my family loves it. Uh, we moved from Baltimore, um, and we sold our house in Baltimore, and we bought a new one here. So. We just have to put up with the hurricanes, that's all, right? Yep, yep this weekend. <laughs> will this be your first experience of it a hurricane? It will be my first hurricane, uh, but... Uh, I'm pretty resilient. <laughs> Shouldn't be a problem. I'd say it too. Yeah. Two division champion for one championship. And we're having a big historic 100th show, one century. And they're also going to have two shows during that day, which yeah. is amazing in itself. And you're going to be defending the championship. You're going to be defending the light heavyweight championship heavyweight. against Brandon the Truth Vera, yeah. which is going to be an awesome fight. Two names, you on the card and the truth. That's going to be great on October 13th. It's going to be in Tokyo. Yep. You can see it on TNT, which is Turner Sports, and also on Bleacher Report Live, BR Live. This one century, what are your thoughts of this big event and also facing the truth? You know, it's unreal because I've been the truth fan since, you know, since I was in college. So it's an honor for me. It's, uh, you know, uh, I would say over a decade of hard work uh, and uh, I, I get to face uh, Brendan, who, who I've been a big fan of since he started competing as well. Um, and, and for me to, uh, to, to main event the 100th show for one championship, it, it's a big honor. And, and, and I take it as a big responsibility and that's why I'm doing everything in my power to prepare the best for this battle. Time difference, because it's in Tokyo and you're training in Fort Lauderdale, is there any adjustment when you go? Are you going to be going over there a week, two weeks earlier, or just I'll what's the plan there, there and what's the time difference like? I'll go there about eight days early. Uh, I think uh, it's about uh, either 13 hours or 11 hours. I can't, I can't remember, but it's day and night, which works fine with me because we, we, when we spar, we spar in the morning, and so it's the same time as the fight, you know, so it works for me. Uh, when I get there, I do have to, the first two days, I do have to really try to get acclimated to the time zone. Where did you grow up? I grew up in Myanmar, in Burma, um, in, in a small, uh, in the northern state, you know, in a small village. Where is that when you look at the Myanmar map? Myanmar is right next to uh, Thailand and India. It's, it's not a small country, you know, it's a big country. Um, it's relatively unknown because of uh, the, the politics there, you know. Uh, but uh, it, it's a beautiful country, and uh, the, the people there are very nice, and everybody should visit it at one point because it's uh, it's uh, it's pretty cheap, you know. Everything when you get there is pretty cheap. What was it like for you growing up? Very different. <laughs> Never seen you know any any person that looked different from us. You know, we're all you know Burmese in a small village, Gachin natives. I uh, never seen a Caucasian person. Never seen like an African American person before. So it's it's very different and it's uh it's it's unique and you know um, it's a third world country. 
so we don't have the we don't have you know things that you guys take for granted you know it, like you know sometimes we don't have electricity for weeks we well, might experience some of that with the hurricane coming hopefully not but geez but you'll be prepared for it yeah. so were you athletic growing up was I athletic growing up playing um, sports yeah I played sports I played soccer you know um, but I wasn't super athletic you know I wasn't like uh, much better than you know all the other kids but I was big you know you mentioned about how you haven't seen a Caucasian or an African American before. When did you first? Was that in college when you first experienced that, or was I, that before? High school, high school, around high school. So um, I grew up in uh, in the northern uh, part of Myanmar, and then uh, when I was uh, when I was uh, in uh, elementary, middle school, we moved down to uh, Yangon, the capital city, and that's where we met. You know, capital city is a little bit more open. Yeah. What did you want to do when you were a kid? Like, did you have goals, something that you wanted to become when you were a kid, though? What was that? I, I wanted to go into, you know, agriculture. I wanted to be a farmer. Um, and, and that's why I went to school. You know, I went to school for agriculture in, uh, in Michigan. Um, you know, I, I almost went to Florida State University. Oh, you went for a seminal. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, uh, they it, have a good agriculture yes, program? Yes, And they grow rice. So. Uh, Myanmar is a big rice country, so, um, and uh, so that was uh, one thing that I wanted to do. You know, I wanted to revolutionize uh, agriculture in my country, but plans got changed, and, and I fell in love with mixed martial arts. That's something you experienced in Michigan when you went to college. Yeah. Is that when you start getting yeah. into mixed martial arts? In, and where did you go to school in Michigan? I went to a small uh, Christian school called Andrews University. How did you find that? Just through the college uh, book. Mm -hmm. was, yeah, so um, and, and one day I flipped the book in the middle, and then Andrews was right in the middle. <laughs> Coincidence, huh? Or maybe it's God's plan. I don't know. Could be too. That's. Yeah. A, I believe that as well. It could have yeah. very well been. What made you decide America? Um, th that's where. So I went to an international school in uh, Yangon, uh, International School of Yangon, and uh, from there, you know, a lot of the teachers are American. Um, and my brother, uh, no, my father wanted me to uh, further my education, so he said, you know, go to America. Was that the reputation America had a very good education, yeah, system. Good education system? What was the education system like for you growing up? Uh, for me, it was good. It was good because I went to an international school. Um, in, in Asia, math is good, you know, math is very good. In, in Myanmar, math is good, but uh, they, they lack, you know, uh, they lack other. Uh, a high education in a college system over there is not as good. You are the one championship middleweight and light heavyweight champion, two titles. That's phenomenal. Before you got involved in all of this and your successes here, and I hope I say this right, you were a migratory beekeeper. Yes. What is a migratory beekeeper? On the other side of Florida, in Felda, near uh, near Fort Myers. Yep, on the other side of uh, Florida, uh, we would uh, we would uh, we, we would take the bees and we would take them to Michigan to pollinate, uh, you know, apples to pollinate blueberries. Uh, we would take it to uh, Wisconsin to pollinate cranberries. We would take it to California to pollinate almonds, and then we would come back to Florida when it was winter time up there. That is so cool. Did you ever get stung by a bee? Every day, every day. <laughs> and, and every day, every time they sting you, it still hurts. <laughs> Did that help with fighting? <laughs> I don't know about that. Pain resistance? No, or no it still hurts. But it, did, it did tell me, oh, I can't waste my life, you know, uh, doing things that I don't love, and I got to pursue after my passion, which was you know, mixed martial arts. While I was, uh, I was working as a migratory beekeeper, I was still, you know, fighting on the side as a hobby, you know, and then I realized, you know what, I need to pursue it full on out or you know I'm not gonna get to my goals you don't miss be keeping them I mean I do I do I, I, I love you know I, I love that work and I love that line of work I love agriculture you know maybe one day I'll go back into it but uh, right now this is my career and this is what I'm trying to you know, do did you think of having a nickname for fighting associated with beekeeping or bees 
No, <laughs> I already was given a nickname, you know, the Burmese, the Burmese Python. Python. Right, you're the Burmese Python. But I just didn't know with the beekeeping and all, if there was something there, oh, maybe we could do some of the bees. <laughs> the stinger, huh? That's a good, that's a great one, actually. How did you get the nickname, the Burmese Python? So I was fighting in Indiana, and uh, one of the promoters was like, what, what country are you from? You know, we got to write down what country you're from. And I said, I'm from Myanmar, and they never heard of that country. A lot of Americans have and never heard of that country yet. But, uh, and then they, they said, like, you know, the, the snake, the Burmese Python, and, and then the, the promoter said, you know what, we'll, we'll give you that name, the Burmese Python. That's going to be a nickname from now on. It's a good name. You like the nickname? It's stuck now. <laughs> <laughs> I right. anymore, yeah. <laughs> now, this is very interesting to me because you're starting your career. Tell me if I have this right. Your fighting debut, you lost. Yeah. That's correct. But I was hooked. Go ahead, tell me, tell me yeah. how did you overcome that? Because here's your first time out, yeah. you've been training, and all of a sudden, oh gosh, I lost. Yeah. So how did you overcome that and just keep pursuing? So, so I started with Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, you know, and I, and, and, I, and I won some tournaments, you know, I, I, I hit my benchmarks, and I was like, you know what, I'm going to pursue MMA, you know, because I love it. Like, it looked like something that would really interest me, and then I did my first uh, match, and I fought like a, a Division One wrestler, and he took me down and gone and pounded me, and my cheekbones rolled up. I didn't give up in that fight. You know, the doctor saw it, and the doctor said we gotta stop this fight. You know, but ever since then I was hooked, and I was like, in love with you know uh, competing. I was in love with the whole process, and I was like, in love with mixed martial arts. You were just waiting to get back there and get another chance at it. You were able to do that. Did you know back then in 2005? Because that's about when, right? You started to yeah. compete. Did you have something inside that said, hey, I'm going to do very well at this? Or was um, it a building process? No, it was a building process, you know. Uh, in, in the gym, I did good against all the other guys, you know, the guys that would compete. And I was always very strong and tough and durable, you know. Um, of course, during that time, I didn't have the skill set I do now. Uh, but it's all a learning process. But I, I always thought, man, I, I'm, you know, I always thought I could do it. And, and there's like a certain craziness in me, a certain like, you know, fire in me that wants to compete and, you know, um, and, and keep going. Um, I, I, I just love, you know, I just love the, the whole process of it and the whole competition part of it. How did you get involved in one championship? Uh, they reached, me, reached out to me in uh, 2000, end of 2013. So it was about eight years in the business yeah. that they reached out to you. Yeah. And just what your thoughts? Did you get to meet Chatri? And no, I didn't. No, not right away. You know, um, uh, Matt Humes, the, the matchmaker, reached out to me. They said they were going to go to Myanmar. They would like me to uh, compete over there. And then that's where uh, I got, you know, I got to know one championship, and I, I made my first debut in uh, 2014. Uh, and then uh, I competed in Indonesia. Uh, won my won my won my fight there. And then, uh, and then I had some issues with my passport, you know, my, my travel document. So I couldn't compete for a year and a half. But during that time, I was training, I was getting better, I was coaching other fighters, and then getting, you know, experience from watching other fights, uh, uh, cornering other fighters and stuff like that. So. so you did get to fight them back in Myanmar? Yes. What was that experience like to insane, do that? Insane, insane, insane. Um, Never, like, never thought that I would be able to, you know, go back and main event a, a, a fight in Myanmar, you know. Um, the whole arena was sold out. Um, the Burmese fans love, you know, they love combat sports, you know. And then, and then uh, after my first fight, like, every event after that, when I would compete, it, the arena would be sold out top to bottom. And, uh, and I would get a lot of, like, um, I would get a lot of fans from Myanmar, you know, and then eventually sponsorships and eventually it got big, yeah. Was that a turning point for you or was there something else that was a turning point as far as building your career? Uh, for, for building my career, that was a turning point, you know, financially, uh, with sponsorship and all, uh, it, 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 was, uh, it was a point when I could make a living, you know, before that, this is a side gig. You can't make money with uh, competing in the local shows, you know. Martial arts and fighting became more important than just winning titles in your homeland, in your country. 
It's helped your country. Tell us why. It, it, it's united the country. You know, when I compete, it's united the country because we have a lot of uh, diversity in my country. There's a lot of uh, different, you know, different people, ethnic people, uh, and uh, a lot of war going on between them. But when I compete, you know, everybody um, gets together. Everybody for that split minute or a few minutes that I compete, you know, they all unite and they all cheer for me. And for me, that's that's bigger than just me fighting. You know, that's uh, that that's bigger than uh, MMA, and that's uh, uh, for me, it's a uh, it's it's a it's an amazing platform for me to be able to unite, you know, the country at, at that one point. That's something that no matter what struggles, what differences everyone's having, they all come together to support and to watch you. Is really what the country is doing, and. You ended up being Vitaly in 2017 to become the one middleweight champion. Was that in Myanmar? That was in Myanmar. Yeah, that was in Myanmar. What was it like there that time and also winning the title? It was insane. You know, there's a, a, a lot of pressure, a lot of pressure, the whole country. And plus, uh, I, I, I lost to him on a short notice match. You know, I lost to him. I got beat up really bad, you know, five rounds and I was all bloody up. I got a... Uh, 11 stitches here, uh, like five stitches here, and then three stitches up here. Um, I was like a bloody mess. Um, and so a lot of the people in Myanmar were like, uh, please don't fight him. You know, they were like begging me not to fight him. Um, but uh, as, a, as a competitor, you know, you, you want to you wanna get even and you want to get your score even back with him. Um, and that, when, when I won, it was insane. The whole stadium went crazy. The whole country were like, couldn't, couldn't stop talking about it. Um, it. It was amazing. So then being Myanmar's first world champion in sport, that is you. What's it like when you are walking around and the people see you? Like it's, uh, everybody wants to stop and take pictures of me. And it, it's pretty insane, yeah. You're a national hero. Do you speak to kids and adults and leaders of your country and try to unify them? Do you see that? as also something that you need to do? For sure. Uh, with the platform that I have, I'm able to you know, reach out to the young generation. I'm able to talk to the older generation. I'm, I'm, I'm able to talk to you know, the, the, the people in charge. And, uh, and I want to make a difference. You know? Right now, my focus is on the title match that's coming up. But eventually, you know, I want to I I use my uh, platform for good. And that's One Century Historic Show in Tokyo, October the 13th, and that's going to be against Brandon the Truth Vera, defending your light heavyweight title. You're also the middleweight champion. I'm interested to know, would you become a government or political leader in your country at some point? Uh, politics is not my forte, you know. It's, it's not that something that I'm uh, good at, uh, but we'll see, you know, we'll see. Uh, right now, my calling is uh, to be the best uh, middleweight, to be the best martial artist that I can be. And that is, right now, your goal. You have this big fight coming up, but I also know that you're involved in causes and charities. And being a beekeeper, yeah. the wildlife is wildlife, very important yeah. to you. Speak a little bit about wildlife and some things that you want to do there. Yeah. So, so wildlife is very important to me. Um, uh, elephants are my favorite, favorite uh, you know, animals, creatures, um, and there's a lot of you know uh, poaching going on in Myanmar, and uh, and not not just elephants, but elephants were the main of them, the the main uh, animals, um, and they say you know in 2020, by 2020, uh, by the end of 2020, we might not have any more you know elephants, so uh, I uh, um, I uh, collaborated with WWF, you know, the wildlife fund, yeah, yep. the wildlife fund, and then. Uh, and, uh, and other, uh, and other you know, groups and other uh, NGOs. Did you ever fathom that when you were getting involved in MMA that you would be doing all this other stuff? No, not at all. <laughs> How does not it make you feel though to be able to do that for yourself, your family, your country too? It's an honor, you know, it's, uh, it's unbelievable. You know, I get to pursue what I love and at the same time positively affect, you know, impact, put a positive impact on my society. So. Um, for me, it's an honor, and uh, it's it's a dream come true for me. One championship is really big on 
creating role models, superheroes, and you're a fine example of both of the things that you've been doing inside the fight and outside the fight. You beat Alexandre in 2018 to win the one light heavyweight world title. That was your second title that you're holding now. How challenging is it to have two titles and two divisions? It's challenging, you know, especially with the, with the weight gain and the weight cut. Um, but uh, with the day that I can't defend both belts, is the day that I will vacate one of them, you know. Um, right now I still can and I'm still able to. I train with the best team in the world um, and I believe that um, we have, we're have just scratching the surface, you know. Uh, as far as uh, my, my, uh, my skill set goes, I think I have the skill set to compete uh, for, for both belts and, 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 and stay, remain the champion there. Training at Hard Knocks 365 in Fort Lauderdale here in South Florida. And I read that defending the title, the middleweight title, against Ken, hope I say it right, Hasegawa. Hasegawa. Thank you. Hasegawa was the best fight in one history. And I'm just wondering your thoughts on that fight and what you thought of it. It was very back and forth fight, you know. I. Um so previously, the Myanmar fans were saying my, my, you know, my matches are too short, my fights are too short. So like on the first, because you were winning one, them yeah, too quickly. Yeah. So on the first one, I want to kind of slow it down a little bit, uh, pick my shots, and then get his timing. But instead, he got my timing and my range, and then I got beat up pretty bad. You know, and it was very back and forth, very very bloody. Yeah. And then in the fifth round, when I came out, I said, you know. I need to finish this match, and I need to finish it decisively, um, because you know the rest of the world is gonna say, "Oh, he only won because it's his home country. It's his, it's his, you know, uh, it's in his backyard." So I wanted to make it decisive, and I want to make it uh, uh, finish it with an exclamation mark, and that's why you know I, I fought really hard for the knockout. And you finished it with the exclamation mark. You have family still in Burma, yep. as well. What's it been like for them with what you've been able to do and just when people learn that yeah. their family of you, how proud are they and what is it like for them? Yeah, they're super proud, you know, they're super proud. Um, so like I'm a, uh, in Myanmar, I'm like a household name now. Uh, so it's, uh, for them, it's, uh, they get a lot of pride in it, out of it. Uh, and it's, it's, it's nice, you know, it's really nice. Uh, and they can always like show a picture of us together um, before you know I got uh, famous over there. Are people taking pictures with them? I'm not sure. <laughs> That's why sometimes they do yeah. that, so I didn't know. Yeah. Like here's nice that'll happen. So okay, we're gonna wrap this up. Thank you so much for the time. One century, big historic show for one championship. It's their hundredth show. They're actually gonna have two shows on that day, so it's actually the hundredth and hundred first show, October thirteenth in Tokyo. And the main event of the double show is the Burmese Python facing the truth. And that is Ang La Ensang versus Brandon Vera for your light heavyweight title. And as you did talk a little bit about it, but as you're getting closer to it and as it's going, how do you compare this event to anything you've been on before? It's the same. It's the same. I don't like like when I look back to it, it's gonna feel like wow, that was so historic. But when I prepare for it as a competitor, it's, it's the same. I keep it level-headed and I keep it in the moment. So rather than looking yeah, ahead or no, looking yeah, to like, oh my God, this is a big make historic show. Than it is. Yeah, don't make it bigger than it is because when you get locked up in the cage, it's just you and your opponent. And what are your goals now? To be the most dominant champion that I can be for one championship. Brandon Vera, the truth. He's looking for two titles. He has a title. He's the heavyweight champion. Yep. And I don't know if you saw the movie Hobbs and Shaw. I did. I, no, no, no. I saw the preview of it. I okay, see, it's the movie. And the reason I bring this up is just because of this. Brandon Vera got to interview The Rock, Dwayne Johnson. And I didn't know if you saw that. I'm just curious. If, and it was fun. It was good. It was. 
lighthearted stuff, and they talked about the movie, and they talked about the fighting too, and all like that. But I'm just wondering if you were a Rock fan. Uh, I am. What do you think about him and what he's been able to do? He's like a superhero yeah. role model as well. I just thought yeah. that throw that in as well. Yeah, and and the Rock's a good person. You know, he's a good person. He, he's a uh, and he's very uplifting and very encouraging, and he's uh, he's real. So I like The Rock a lot. And there, do you have any other people, or are there people that you look up to, or have looked up to when you were young, or look up to now? Yeah, I mean, I, like I said, I looked up to Brandon Bear when I was, you know, when I was starting up. Um, uh, I look up, I look up to people that uh, do and say good things. Well, everybody, you got to check out One Century. It's going to be a huge event, October 13th. In America, you can see it on TNT, which is under Turner Sports Banner, as well as Bleacher Report Live. It's really cool. They're telling me that One Championship is going to be coming to the United States probably next year, so it'll be great to see that. Hopefully, we'll get to see you on the card. And thank you for the time. Thank you very much.